This is The Top, where I interview entrepreneurs who are number one or number two in their industry in terms of revenue or customer base. You'll learn how much revenue they're making, what their marketing funnel looks like, and how many customers they have. I'm now at $20,000 per talk. Five and six million. He is hell-bent on global domination. We just broke our 100,000 unit soul mark. And I'm your host, Nathan Latka. Okay, Top Tribe, this week's winner of the 100 bucks is Dustin Goodwin. He's in the HR industry, specifically in the software as a service space, looking to increase his revenue. So congratulations, Dustin. For your guys' chance to win 100 bucks every Monday on the show to build your idea, simply subscribe to the podcast on iTunes now, and then text the word Nathan to 33444. Again, text the word Nathan to 33444. Many people ask me what tool I used to sell my first company, Heyo. The answer is thetopinbox.com. I used it to send emails, schedule emails to be sent out later, and set reminders inside my inbox so I would know when potential buyers were actually interested, and I easily remember to follow up with ones that hadn't replied to me. You can try it for free at thetopinbox.com. Nathan Latke here. This is episode 554. Coming up tomorrow morning, you'll learn from Francisco Lorraine of Pseudo.ai. They've raised 2.3 million bucks at a 10.3 million post money valuation to fix a very unique CRA, CRM space problem. And I will tell you folks, I am buying, selling, and investing in companies in the CRM, sales tool, and account executive space. So if you're investing in a tool, if you want to buy a tool, maybe you're a BD person listening, or maybe you're a a CEO in the space wanting to raise capital, reach out to me. Shoot me a text at 703-431-2709. I'd love to learn more about the business. Top Tribe, good morning. Nathan Latke here. Our guest today is Eric Berman. And since graduating from UCSD, he's been a serial entrepreneur and business operator. He grew his first company to 400 employees and just missed out on going public. We'll talk about that. He then consulted for many other businesses and is now the CEO and founder of Branditized, a full-service performance-based marketing agency that partners with esteemed thought leaders such as Brian Tracy, Jack Canfield, and many, many others. Eric, are you ready to take us to the top? Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. So tell us first, what happened with this company you grew that you just missed out taking public? Uh, Well, funny enough, this is back in the uh, late 90s, and we were uh, going after the college market, and then the web started hitting. And uh, we were actually the first first of all Facebooks. We were the original Facebook. It was called uh, collegeclub.com. We had grown to, gosh, uh, yeah, about 400 employees, raised $75 million dollars. Um, and this was at the time back in the internet, the first before the first bubble, where venture less about get, uh, getting profitable, it was more about buying, uh, getting as many eyeballs as possible. So it was spend, 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 get get market share, get market share. And so we were doing that at a furious rate. And at one point, we were the 40th biggest site in the web, and uh, really the number one uh, pure college play website, um, offering all sorts of features to the college market. And early on, we realized the college market was was the one to go after. Obviously, uh, Zuckerberg knew that as well. And uh, and uh, years later, certainly did what we were trying to do the right way. A lot of it was, I think, just timing and missing the wave. So when they, um, it was an interesting story that we worked, worked our asses off to finally file to go public. Uh, we were taking our first vacation about five years. And then as we were on uh, in Playa de Carmen, Mexico, I remember this very well, we were watching the stock markets just crash before our very own eyes. What year was this, 99? This is 90, this is a 2000, April of 2000. 2000. So we were supposed to go out about July of 2000, and I was watching my CFO have a heart attack on the fly, flew home immediately, and we had a $2 million bridge, actually, sorry, a $10 million bridge loan lined up to bridge us to the IPO, and all the bankers, everybody basically closed the windows immediately after the, the crash, and so they needed to hold off, and so we were literally sitting there with our pants down and said, what the hell are we going to do? And so it was, it was a crazy, crazy time. How much cash was in the bank when you guys were sitting on the beach in Playa del Carmen? Uh, well, you know, we were burning about 2 million a month at that time with yeah. 400 employees. And, uh, you know, we only had enough run for maybe three, you know, two, three months with that, with that, that staff. Yeah. So about 6 million in the bank. How much had you raised before that, before the bridge? Uh, well, we in total, the life lifespan was 75 million. Um, we just finished a series C, um, and, uh, yeah, we was getting some big players. It was, we were like the little darlings of San Diego and it was really exciting. And we were supposed to be the ones acquiring all the companies in the college space. So it was, it was a fun time, but uh, it was a tough loss. So this was like a, it's just a spectacular failure. I love these stories. So 75 million bucks plus a market cap wiped out. Yep. 
Yep. Crazy. Exactly. So you We're saw, you saw, you through. saw nothing from that except the salary you paid yourself, right? Salary paid myself. You know, I tell people it's, it's a lot harder to lose money. That is real dollars in the bank account than a piece of paper that you never actually had. I mean, you never saw the dollars. So, you know, and that was in my twenties and it was, it was, you know, coming from nothing to having a great ride. You know, all you could do is focus on the positive and take the learnings from it. I mean, what, what are you going to do? I can't sit around and cry about it. So it was like, Oh, Hey, I, I had way more experience than a lot of people in my age. So I was pretty proud of that. And, you know, you sort of just, you know, shake off the cobwebs, you know, stand up and, and, and move on and go to the next project. How old were you at that point? I was uh, 20, 28. So I started at 21. So I was 28 when it came crashing down. Wow. And how old are you now? Uh, 45. So take us through that thing crashes. What do you do in the, in the years after that? So I uh, started started uh, doing some consulting and uh, well, first we actually tried to buy it out of bankruptcy, <laughs> but and that and that failed. I know a uh, lot of people it, that did that very successfully. Bought tech out of 01 at, at a huge discount. Oh, it was it was crazy. It was it was value. We were going to be going out at a half a billion at the IPO, and I think it ended up selling for about 25 million uh, through one of the competitors that we were going to buy. They bought us, and then one of the guys we were going to buy it out of bankruptcy. We were down to the wire, and all of a sudden his wife has a stroke. Literally or before, but we're, so this, this is the sign of, that said, forget it. You know, you know, this is happening. Is, we're, we're done. Uh, so, so to answer your other question, we started, um, started just consulting. I actually did a fun project with Club Med and created a, 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 a kind of a social media platform for Club Med and did some social networking with them. And that was a fun experience. And then uh, back at, at College Club, the first company, because we were so young, one of the things the uh, the main founder CEO really was pushing was a lot of personal development, a lot of self help. So we would actually lock ourselves in the room at six in the morning, six to seven every day, and do a breakfast with uh, Tony Robbins and Brian Tracy, and we'd fuel our brains with actual content and stuff they never really teach you in college and school. And that's sort of one of my regrets of college, of, of the educational system is they don't teach li- life skills. Um, so 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 essentially. Um, so I did a lot of Brian Tracy, and I got a chance to actually meet Brian. He was in San Diego and um, got a chance to meet with him and find out that he was struggling figuring out his whole Internet business. This is back in 2001. So I came to Brian. And I said, Brian, you know, I have an idea. I know how I can help you. I know what you need, but I'm not an employee. I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur, so I'll come in and do this for you, but don't pay me anything. I'll, I'll take a piece of the back end. So he's like, "Whoa, really?" He's like, "So you'll do all this work?" And he's like, "You're my kind of my kind of guy." I would have said, so, "I would have said, Brian, you're never going to find somebody else that just spent seventy five million bucks on their online education. You want to book me for your back end?" <laughs> that could that could have worked too. And I might have slipped that in that conversation somewhat <laughs> during the interview process. So it's good good point. Yeah. So I think it, it worked out well. And of course, I was regurgitating all this content back to him, and that that never hurts either when you sort of tell him what you know his own stuff. That's awesome. So, so we headed off, and this is now 2001, and uh, started working with Brian and, um, and and started building that out with a team of about 14, 15 people and built up his online presence and, and learned a lot in, in that side of the industry. Mm-hmm. And how does a guy like that compare to kind of like a guy like Gary Vee, right? Like, well, I mean, one was born in the Internet age, one was pre-Internet age and had to adopt the Internet age. It's different because, you know, I think Gary's in a much – it's much – you know, a better situation, obviously, because the guru himself understands how to do online marketing. And that just means like he, he's constantly there doing stuff every second of the day. Whereas Brian, it's kind of we have to force feed certain things to him and tell him what he needs to do. And often oftentimes we're doing a lot of the stuff. But it's it's a lot different when we're posting stuff on social media versus him getting behind camera and just saying, hey, here, I'm here in Russia. And let me tell you about the Russian economy and how this relates to business, yeah. which we're still trying to do. You know, 15 years later with Brian, still trying to coach him on doing that. Um, and, and he's great. He's trying, but it's just it's just not a habit. So would you say your business model at Brian Ties is really an agency? So, so uh, you know, good question. So after after working with Brian for about 10 plus years, 10, 12 years, you know, I started getting tapped on the shoulder by a lot of other gurus saying, hey, what you do for Brian, can you do for me? And this is, you know, everybody wants to build up their own brand online. And uh, eventually I'm like, okay, wait a second. This might be the pivot here. So... Next was how do I explain to Brian that I'm no longer do, I'm no longer we're gonna have a monogamous relationship anymore that we want to sort of date other other clients and take the staff and, and work with others and so that's what that's what occurred is is we he agreed after sort of a long two year conversation we went back and forth and totally on board worked out well Brian and I have a have sort of a father son relationship and, and and still you know love each other today and um, and that was sort of the pivot was starting to work with other people like Brian. But under the same context, and we are really one of them. It's an interesting model. I'm surprised when I'm starting to see more do this, and it's being an agency that's that's fully performance based. So 
from a client's perspective, rather than us having to pitch clients to, to choose us over all the other agencies in town, we're getting they're all coming to us. And it's because the offering is, hey, we're going to do all this work for you. And by the way, don't pay us anything. We'll only take a piece after we succeed with you. So now we're investing our actual sweat equity, our salaries into your brand, which then then they know we really believe in them. And for them, it's it's you know, they have nothing to lose. So for so us, wrap, yeah. wrap that up for us, because that's that's so it's hard to kind of predict the average, like, kind of the lifetime value of a potential customer you're working with, because you just have no idea. There's a lot of variables. How, is it going to perform? Is it not going to perform? Is it them? Is it your fault? You know, how's it all work in the last tw- call it in 2015? What was total revenue? Uh, total revenue for 2015 was about uh, five million. Okay, and what do you guys think you'll do? It's almost you know almost at the end of 2016. What do you th- what do you do in 2016? Uh, actually, I'm sorry, the 2016 is to be closer to five. Last year was closer to four. Got it. Okay, and yeah. how many employees? Uh, we are now up to about 28. All right, so you're not burning two million a month, right? Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. so 28 employees. Nice. And I will never never go back to 400 people. I like to, I'd say 75 ish is probably the max I want to hit out at. That's awesome. So, again, you don't have like a typical kind of monthly retainer or anything like that. You're taking percentages specifically on back end sales. Is that right? Yep, that's right. Okay, so let me just put even more color around this. If I go to BrianTracy.com and I buy his audio CD for 20 bucks, how much of that money is going to go to you? Oh, uh, well, after all the cogs and everything else and paying out Brian, you know, we'll make about 40% of that. Okay. Wow. That, I mean, that's actually pretty healthy for a, kind of a physical product. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I mean, we're looking to make roughly, you know, close to the high thirties to 50%, you know, after, you know, paying out stuff net to us. And, and you said and so, after paying out Brian, what does he do? Have a percentage he gets paid on every sale, no matter what. And then the rest goes to expenses. Yeah, that's, that's right. So yeah, Brian, Brian and other clients, you know, it's, it's sort of like we take the cog, we take out the cogs and whatever's left over, we split a certain percentage to the, to the partners. Got it. And a lot of it has to do, a lot of it has to do with early on when you start a relationship and they're bringing over their list and their, their name, we, we, we get less of a cut and when we're bringing in fresh leads and, and people on our own, then we get a higher percentage. Who is right now, uh, not someone who's well known, but because you've been around the industry so far, your gut's probably pretty honed and you can predict what's go- or who's going to be big. Who right mm-hmm. now is on the up and up and in five years we're going to be going, oh my gosh, for the next Tony Robbins? Uh, well, the, the big name that goes around is Brendan Burchard. Mm-hmm. So Brendan's really, uh, you know, he's got that, motiv- you know, he's really motivational. He, he, he understands marketing really well. Great on camera. He's built up a huge following. And so he's kind of a model that a lot of people watch. Are you working with him? Uh, we're not working. I mean, we've, I've, you hung out with him, done masterminds with him, things of that nature, but we're not actually his client. He's got his full team himself. Which client, right? I don't know if you can share this, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Which client right now is making you the most money? Uh, Brian. Really? Okay. Yeah. Wait, Burchard? No, Brian Tracy. No, oh, no, Tracy. Tra- you're still working yeah. with Brian. Tra- yeah, I was going to say, I thought it was yeah. Brendan. Um, okay, Brian, so you're still working with him. Yeah. Got it. Yes. Very cool. And um, so how do you grow the business? You just sign up more Brian's of the world or are you looking at any so- SaaS offerings or things like that? So back back to the end. Sorry about the dog barking. That's I thought okay. I had him calm. It's okay. <laughs> um, so so it's interesting. Back to what you said earlier. It, the, the true challenge for us is picking the winners, and this is what we've learned a lot. And because we've we've gone into this model for about two and a half years, and we've had some losers. It's 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 a combination of who could really make some some good revenue. Plus, honestly, working with clients you can get along well that, with that aren't going to be uh, a pain in the ass client to work to deal with. And uh, so there's been so, some misses on that. And and the way we look at it is because I get hit up all the time. As I turn around, I, I go to people and I say, here's the deal. Um, we're gonna be investing probably thirty to $50,000 a month in salaries in your brand. So let's just do the math together. I need to make at least 2X that and, and close to 3X that over a period of you know maybe 2X by the end of the first year. I like to be breaking even after three to six months. And by the you know, end of two years, I like to be making 3X that. Can we achieve that together? And I need them to show me how their business plan shows, you know, with, with our help, can we, get, we can get there. So we almost we sort of do some business modeling, and that's kind of where I'm at now with each client, and that selects out that that takes away a lot of them, and and in that case, I just refer them elsewhere. And- Folks, I may have to stop doing the podcast. I will tell you why. I have found a business and I'm ready to go all in. It's the one I want to take public by the time I turn 30. It's called the topinbox.com. And here's why I know it's going to be big, very big. There are so many other companies charging way too much for this right now. Yes, where? Tout app, boomerang. That's to do things like send later reminders and auto follow ups for salespeople inside of your Gmail inbox. I'm doing it. I'm going to do it for free. We have so many people using it, it's growing so fast. 
podcast, and we do many of the things that salespeople love. We don't require people to leave the inbox to go log into a website. It's so simple to use, and I have to tell you, I mean, salespeople are like drooling over this thing. They're like licking the, the drool off their keyboard. They're loving this thing so much. The topinbox.com. Go install it now. Use it for free, people. Okay, I like you because you're listeners. Use it for free before I decide to start charging for it. Go right now to the topinbox.com. Okay, Top Tribe, I have to tell you, many people go, Nathan, you came out of nowhere, your website's growing so fast, how'd you do it? The answer is simple. So I use HostGator, I don't know if you guys know that, but I use HostGator, and the reason I do, they have like about 4,500 free templates I can use, because I don't code. They've got a great e-commerce plugin, and guys, I bug the heck out of their support. They've got 24-7 support, which I love. So what I've done is I've worked with them. You guys know I make great deals. If you go to HostGator.com forward slash Nathan, you can sign up, get your own domain for 30% off and a 45-day money-back guarantee. Okay, again, I make great deals for you guys. Go to HostGator.com forward slash Nathan to grab that now. Good. Well, Eric, let's round out more kind of about your personality here with the famous five. These are one word or very short answers. You ready? Yeah. All right, number one, what's your favorite business book? Uh, it's uh, how to win friend, friends and influence others. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Um, you know, you said Gary, Gary V. Actually, I love uh, following his stuff quite a bit. Number two, is there? Or sorry, number three, is there a favorite online tool you have, like TopTal? Uh, online tool, we use a lot of uh, for hiring. I love Spark Hire. Oh, interesting. Okay. Number four, yes or no? Do you get eight hours of sleep every night? Seven and a half. Okay, so close. And what's your no. situation? Married, single, you have kids? Single. No Sing kids. No kids. Just a, bark just a barking dog in the background. <laughs> That's good. All right, and how old are you? 45. 45. Yep, so last question. Take us back 50 or 25 years. What do you wish your 20-year-old self knew? Um, I wish my 20-year-old self um, knew that despite what these uh, venture capitalists say, you got to get to profitability. Um, but, uh, you know, beyond that, I think you, you got to um, continue to – Keep an open mind, network with as many people as you can, and uh, and be and follow your passions and be humble. Top tribe, there you have it. Be humble. Again, get to profitability as fast as you can. Uh, from Eric Berman, again, founder of Branditized after failing royally back in 2001. I loved how he's transparent on that story. Now he's built this brand and did about $4 million bucks in 2015. Well, oh, hopefully do about $5 million here in 2016 with this tw team of 28 people that they, you know, on average take 30 to 40% of back-end sales from big online names like Brian Tracy and motivational folks in that space. Eric, thank you for taking us to the top. My pleasure. Thank you. If you enjoyed Eric today, go back and listen to Matt yesterday. Matt's company, Prospectify, raised $1 million at a $3 million post money, or sorry, $4 million post money valuation, but then they just passed twenty five dollars in monthly recurring revenue for better prospecting. Top Tribe, I love giving away free money. I feel like Oprah giving away cars, and I have something special for you today. How many of you have heard our super sharp guests talk about success they've had with Facebook and Google Ads? Well, all of you listening right now, yes, if you're listening, you get $100 in free AdWords. Here's how you get it, okay? Again, and thanks for listening. Get the free $100 from Google right when you sign up with my website host provider, HostGator. Go sign up now to get your free money. HostGator.com forward slash Nathan. Again, that's HostGator.com forward slash Nathan. Okay, Top Tribe, I'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. And don't forget, before you listen to any other episodes, subscribe on iTunes right now for your chance to win 100 bucks every Monday.